Okay, January 29th, 2021. And I'm gonna do a video because I just love a lot of you subs. You know, sometimes you notice I leave a lot of comments when I can and even check out your channels. So I'm gonna post. It's rain turning in the snow. Look at that sunset, pretty nice. Yep, I haven't got my shirt on. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not changing my mind on this. Um, it really is the more you know. And so I want to talk about the movie, The Perfect Day, The Call of the Chosen, that movie that Juan Seven makes when he drives his uh, really cool red car across America. I've watched it five times. I'm going to watch it again. But he drops a lot of clues in there, okay? And he's going up to the Jefferson Library in Arkansas. Looks pretty ga gaudy to me, the lighting stuff. And he talks about Carol Quigley's book. And so I kind of think about this because sometimes, you know, you got to get out of, you got to kind of walk in somebody else's moccasins or boots. But a lot of people don't know about tragedy and hope. But Juan just ripped, just, you know, slides off his tongue that uh, William Jefferson, you know, or Clinton, Bill Clinton, thought uh, he was kind of the embodiment and making tragedy and hope happen. Now, a lot of old school people will know about it. I've got the book, and in fact, you know, I put my video back when I had longer hair and a better tan in my younger days, and I've got that video talking about, you know, get rid of paper money and get gold and silver real things, and that's back when silver was, un or gold was under uh, 700. <clears throat> it's kind of starting to take off now, but in that, if you look at that video, it's only about, I don't know, it's not that long. But I've got my copy of Tragedy and Hope sitting there, okay? It's on my table when I made that video. I was just looking for it now, but I, I haven't found it. But it's somewhere in all my book boxes. Um, so it's... I, I can't read the book. It's too long. It doesn't have pictures. But Cleon Skousen, okay? The Naked Capitalist. Cleon... Look at this. See, some old school people might have this, okay? Okay. It says... Let me see if I can get it better here. A review and commentary on Dr. Carol Quigley's book, Tragedy and Hope. I know that's not in focus. But this book here was amazing. Now, it was harder to get. Um, but I am, you know, I'm very grateful that Cleon signed it and gave me a copy back in the day. That's back like 87. But Cleon is just a great great teacher so let me see um talks about georgetown university just a sec okay let's try it. okay okay look look at this i i try to never bend books but i i gotta show you guys this okay let's there's my ford light let's do it. okay look at this let's see if i can get it focused well i'm gonna read it to you okay why why do some of the richest people in the world support communism and socialism? Why would they support what appears to be the pathway to their own destruction? Dr. Carol Quigley of Harvard, Princeton, and Georgetown universities states that he has been associated with many of these dynastic, dynastic families of the super rich. He therefore writes as an authority on the world's secret power structure. His answers to the above questions may astonish you, okay? Let's get back and talk about the deep stuff here. So, you know, why would really rich people want to control things? Well, they want to have a new world order. Remember Bush? A new world order and all this kind of stuff. So you kind of, even, um, once again, back at Harvard, we're talking global, not global. And, you know, I graduated from there from business school in 89, and we were getting ready for Europe 1992 because they're going to have the euro and do all that kind of stuff. Now, that hasn't really worked out well for everybody in Europe. But the plan, you can call them deep state elite, the dynastic families, they want a one world government with them in control. They don't want a republic. And democracy, you know, if you really get down to it, Juan gave a great explanation. It's there's three people in the elevator. And uh, a woman and two men. The men said, you know, I think we should have a law that you can rape women if you want. 
and the two men vote yes, and the woman says, no, I don't like that law. Well, in a democracy, she's screwed, right? Well, well she's, she's, she's Dunsky because majority rule. Majority is not, the, the minorities need to be protected. All innocent life should be protected. Okay, let's watch the sunset here. Let me see, I'm gonna do the windshield washers real quick. There we go. So, what I would say about, excuse me, what I would say about stuff is, um, that's so cool over that one, is this. Juan 07 understands the big picture. I think he is JFK Jr., okay? I think he is. Uh, but I, you know, haven't met him. I'm just, it's from the evidence that I've gathered. And if he is, I'm about three and a half years older than he is. I was born in 56. But the things he knows, like about Carol Quigley, the things he knows about, you know, he really knows his history. He really knows the Bible. And the more you listen to him, I'm going to watch that movie once again, like I said. And his movie, you know, that he, he does like an hour and it's over an hour with Jennifer Mack um, on near-death experiences. So Juan Osaban is a good, is a very good man. He's like valiant for the truth. And so is Donald Trump, by the way. And I understand that they're, they've been really good friends for years and years. So I think some of these youngsters, you know, like Red Pill and stuff like that, they're great guys. And then uh, Juan said like they, they kind of, anyway, he gets into the, how the Q stuff happened and that he called it the Q team and stuff like that. But people like Red Pill 78 are amazing for explaining truth to tons of people and talking about corruption, all that kind of stuff. But some of the stuff us, old, I guess I'm older now, what can I say, 64, we know things that they don't know, you know, like we know about tragedy and hope. We know that uh, they pulled back MacArthur, otherwise China could have been a free country. But the elites, they want to control, so they introduce communism, and then they get in the schools, they got into Harvard in the 20s, infiltrated the economics department, and pretty soon, your kids are in public schools and you got a 501c church where you're not supposed to, be able to, supposed to be able to talk about politics and stuff. But a real church talks about politics, okay? So it is rather deep. It's extremely deep, but it is a, a war between good and evil. It's between freedom and tyranny, between liberty and slavery. And this country is meant to be free. And so the battle lines are drawn. Uh, do you want people like a single mom's working over there somewhere and she has like two old TV sets and then there's some bum over here that uh, doesn't work in, you know, in a truly communist country. It's like the, the police force would come and say, well, ma'am, you have two TVs and the guy over here that's just sitting on his butt all day does it. So we're going to take your TV and give it to the guy that doesn't have a TV. That's communism. Okay. That's, so, that's communism. That's not how it works. That's the plan of Satan and Lucifer. So, for you younger folks, and I kind of look at the statistics, I'm kind of surprised how many hits I'm having on YouTube, but people are interested in Juan El Sabin. They're interested in honest truth news. And, you know, I know there's the nitpickers. Brent, like the emergency broadcast system didn't go off. I'm aware of that, but in some places it probably did go off. I mean, I'm, I try to watch DC and just all kinds of strange things happening in Washington, DC. And whenever I try to find Juan 07, he, he could be on an obscure channel. But I think the more you know, the more you've studied history, the more you can appreciate the depth of knowledge of Juan Osaven, the depth of conviction he, he's given his life for this, just like the whole Trump crew is, like the really true patriots are. And, uh, you know, I visited New York City a few times, but I wouldn't be there for, I wouldn't live there right now for, for a million bucks. There's like no way, no way. And uh, 
it's kind of sad, but I think New York City's Dunsky. It's Dunsky. So, it's really important, I think, now to educate yourself as much as possible so that as things change, and I think that so many things are going on that we don't know about. Obviously, they're not going to be on fake news. But you can find gems here and there on the internet. You know, Jake will have to jump 